find the area between the two curves, y equals x, and y equal to x cubed minus 8x. This is a good problem because it illustrates when you use your area formula for the space between two curves, a equal to integral top minus bottom. We need to be careful to make sure when top and bottom switch. Let's take a look at the picture. So in this case, y equals x, that's a straight line, intercept of the origin, slope equal to 1. My second curve, it's a cubic, x cubed minus 8x. We'll apply some calculus just to get a rough idea of what this graph looks like. So let's see what we have. If I factor, so I set this equal to 0, factor it out, x squared minus 8 is roughly 2.8. So our zeros are going to be 0 plus minus 2.8, so we plot them. Take the derivative. The roots of this quadratic are going to be plus minus square root of 8 over 3, which is roughly plus minus 1.63. I plug that into the original equation. I'm going to get for 1.63, a minus 10.8, and minus 1.63 gives me 10.8. So 1.63 minus 10.8 is there, and the other point is up here. If you notice, we have enough points now, knowing where the critical points are, to just connect the dots and get a good idea of the rough shape of the curve. Next, we're going to be taking an integral, so I need to know the limits of integration. We'll get them by setting the two equations equal to each other, and then setting that equal to 0. I set x cubed minus 8x equal to x. I get x cubed minus 9x. We factor that, and then the roots are going to be 0 and plus minus 3. So here, here, and here. Now I'm ready to do some integrating. So our area formula, integral top minus bottom. In this case, remember, top and bottom are going to switch as we move across. So in the negative region for x, top is the cubic, bottom's the line. In the positive region for x, top is the line, bottom's the cubic. We put our formulas in, and then we just start crunching. Okay, remember any derivative of a polynomial is just add one to the exponent, flip it over. For x, the exponent's one, so that's gonna turn into x squared over two and so on. Once I get my antiderivatives, we put our numbers in and then we take the difference. So I follow my nose and then I crunch this down to 81 over 2. Okay, note, if we weren't careful with this, if for instance we just assumed the cubic was on top the whole time, we run into problems. So if I integrate from minus 3 to 3 of my cubic minus the bottom, Okay, we just use our top minus bottom formula where we're going to wind up getting zero. And we know that's garbage because the area between these two curves is definitely a positive number. There's something happening between these two curves. So make sure you sketch before you integrate. 